Hey there everyone, my name is Satesh and in this video, we're going to talk about the file structure in the iOS 13 application. In case you have been working on developing apps on iOS 12 or 11, the file structure is a little bit different because now in iOS 13, we are using SwiftUI. Again, the big question is, is SwiftUI going to be the future? Absolutely, yes. Is everybody going to stop working on Storyboard? Eventually, but not right at the moment. The adoption rate of the latest software in the iOS world is significantly high compared to the Android world. So within a very few months, you're going to see that everybody is talking about SwiftUI and is definitely going to be working on SwiftUI. So it's very important for all of us that we understand the file structure that is being populated when we create a new project in iOS 13, understand where things are and where you can open up these files, what each file does, where to look for adding extra security or maybe extra features where actually everything relies on. So in this video, I will give you a brief tour and will walk you through that how each and every file uh, works, what's its specific use case scenario and how you can manipulate them as well. Remember one thing up before we go ahead further, that in the world of uh, Xcode, not just the click is important, everything has its own important. And three special buttons, the command key, the control key, and the option key are also significant. So there are a lot of things that you can do by holding up your command key, option key, and control key, and clicking on a specific thing. More of that, I'll walk you through throughout the course as we'll move forward up here. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and take a tour of the file structure up here. So. Let me fire up my uh, Xcode up here. So this is the default view that you are going to see. And right now, notice from my left-hand pane, I'm on to the very left-hand side and I have selected content view dot Swift. Now yours might look a little bit different. And in this video, we're gonna see that how we can uh, change all these things and can be aware where things are. So as I told you in the previous video, the most easy culprit to be seen up are at the right hand side top corner, which manipulate the navigation pane on the left, bottom and on the right side. So these are the most important one. Apart from that, a couple of things that you should always uh, look out is this guy, which can actually show up your canvas or can actually hide based on what you are doing. So right now we're gonna just show editor only because I want to have a full screen up here, right? So that I can actually talk about that. I'm gonna zoom that. You can do that by command and plus key so that it's much more easily visible to you. Okay, so let's talk about the file structure. Now, although it looks like that we are in the content view and this is the main file, of course, we'll be spending majority of our time here, but actually the file tour of the file structure starts from the my first app. This is the major configuration file responsible for doing variety of things, including your display name. And notice one very important thing is the target. Target is the one thing which Xcode looks up and builds your app for. So here is your display name. And display name can of course be changed, but the most important one for which the Apple actually care is about the bundle identifier. This should be unique. If you're working for the very first version of the app, 1.0 and build one is fine. But as you roll out more update to be in the production, to be done in the production, then surely we have to change the build number and slightly in the version number. It's totally up to you whether you call your app's next version to be 2.0 or maybe 1.1. Totally on you, iPhone or the Apple has nothing to do with that. Then comes up the target device for what you are building your application. Is it just for iPhone or the iPad? Again, just uh, shrinking or de-shrinking your app is not what we call as development for iPad. It's a little bit different there. So you can check mark that or uncheck that and based on that options are aware here. Then comes up the device orientation. Whether you want to support only for the portrait mode, upside down, landscape left or light, you can enable or disable that. For example, if you are building up a new UI for dialing up the phone number, turning check this on, which says upside down, there is no point of that. But for a certain game, this might be useful. So there are a couple of things up here. Then it says the app icon source and designing an icon for the app is also fun. And I'm gonna walk you through with that as well. So these are some of the few options up here. But again, as I said, Xcode is a gigantic software. You can see we are in the general tab only. There are some signing capabilities, some of the resource tag, info, build settings, face settings, and build rules as well that you can introduce in your application. Uh, and there is a lot of things that you can do. And we will be going through while we'll be learning how we can introduce the biometric authentication during this course. We're gonna see how we can take advantage of these build settings and all of that. So these are the only important one right now we're going to discuss. As the course proceed, we definitely are going to talk more about that. 
Moving back onto the general, now let's go ahead onto the folder structure. And in the folder structure, you can see we have got majority of the four of them. Only one of them we majorly use, rest of them are not that much used. The first one is the My First App. We'll be spending most of the time here. So a quick guide, uh, this first app test and the UI testing are for the testing purposes. And they usually are gonna be kept as close for most of the time. If we have a discussion about the testing, that's on later phase. Okay, moving further. First and foremost is the app delegate. I will definitely come back and talk about delegates more. It's almost similar to real world delegate. When let's just say a country visits to another country, it's not actually the country that visits. There are some delegates from that country that visits that country. So these are almost similar to that. I know I'm being cryptic here, but I will definitely explore them much. The file looks gigantic, but it's not much. There are just three methods up here. Rest of them are just comments. So the first method is up here. You can definitely see them by the word func here. So there are just three methods available. Very useful. And these are majorly used when at the moment you open up your app or app is just about to go in the background. So all these definitions actually can be written up here. Most of the time, we'll be spending our time on to the content view and the scene delegate. Again, both are very related and we are going to talk about them later on. And the next file is the content view. This is the file where you actually build up your content, like your text fields, your buttons, your text, everything is being designed from here. Next one, which is a little bit funny, is assets.x cassettes. And this is the place where you introduce all of your icons and images into your app. Now I know by looking at this, you are gonna see that, do I need to design this much of the icons? Uh, the answer is yes and no. Don't worry, in this course, I will also take you through with the Adobe XD phase that how you can design quickly some of the app icons, some of the tricks to design the icons, and it's pretty easy to do so. And right now, just notice on the right hand side pane that I have just check mark for iPhone and iPad. If I just ch turn on for CarPlay and Mac and Apple Watch, there's a whole lot of icons that you have to design. But don't worry, it's a rather easy process and I'll show you some of the tricks in Adobe XD to handle this case as well. A quick side info. In the world of iOS, we don't design just one particular image. We produce three sets of the images, 1X, 2X, and the 3X for higher resolution devices. But these are already taken care by most of the time designers. But if you still want to follow up, I'll put up some videos to help you and understand that process using Adobe XD, the free software by Adobe. Moving further, we have the only storyboard left up in now in the iOS 13, which is the launch screen. Previously, in the iOS world, we used to have a lot of storyboards and entire development used to happen with the storyboards only. Now things are changed and you don't need to worry about anything. And we can just have a storyboard on the launch screen, a quick, a quick splash screen, which uh, is there for a couple of seconds. And that's pretty much it. Moving further, we have info.plist file. This info.plist file is responsible for majority of the permissions. Permissions like camera, audio, biometric authentication, thumbprint, all are being added up here first. Just to give you a quick example, you can come up here and you can just add up a plus icon and then start writing something like privacy. Privacy, and you can see that we have a lot of privacy regarding uh, Bluetooth, downloads, and face ID. So anything that you need, you want to have, you first go up here and mention that. So in case you're coming up from the Android world, yes, it's almost similar to that only, so no big deal, it's almost same up here. Okay, so this is a quick overview of how the file structure is gonna look like. And I know you are pretty much excited about launching your very first Hello World app, but there is so much to understand right from the Hello World app, and in fact, some of the design aspect as well. So my recommendation for all of you is, first and foremost, since I will be teaching you a little bit onto the Adobe XD part as well, uh, I highly recommend to go sign up for the Adobe XD and get their free software XD. This is the software that we are gonna talk uh, in the next couple of videos to design our app icon. We don't want to create a simple hello world. We want to create a hello world which is fully polished, having its own app icon, some things that we can do by pressing of the button and a little bit more than. There's gonna be a lot to understand up here. So that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next video and start designing some of the assets for our upcoming Hello World app.